No TIG torch. Stick with me to the end and I will show you a hack on how to TIG weld with this for cheap. There are a ton of unanswered questions on the Home Depot's website about this welder. And so I'm gonna answer a bunch of those and show you, of course, how it welds. The question that got asked the most is, does it come with a TIG torch? And I've already answered that. A lot of people were asking if it can weld aluminum. Yes, but there's a big but because I, I like big but. You can't TIG weld aluminum with this guy. And that's because this has a DC output, direct current. You need AC current if you want to be doing TIG welding aluminum. You can with a spool gun. Of course, it's sold separately. Does it come with a foot pedal for TIG welding? No, it doesn't. 110 volt only. What size breaker? You need a 20 amp. What kind of rods to use? Well, if you look at it, it can only go up to 90 amps stick welding. So I would say nothing bigger than 3 seconds of an inch diameter rod. And then the actual kind, well, it's a DC output welder. It can either do positive or negative. So just make sure it's not an AC only rod and you'd be good. What does it actually come with? MIG gun for flux core and for solid core wire, ground clamp. Both of those are 10 foot cables, a stinger or electro holder for stick welding, gauges and a gas hose, solid core wire, flux core wire, and a bunch of little uh, consumables, which would be your uh, extra tips and one flux core nozzle and a MIG nozzle. Since you don't need anything extra for flux core welding, let's throw some of this wire in and get to welding. Couple tips and tricks as you are setting up the wire. Take off the tip and the nozzle. Check that the roller is the correct size to the wire diameter you are using. Don't forget to unscrew that little knob to allow the gun to seat correctly. Turn on the machine, pull the trigger, and wait until the wire comes out. Put the correct tip size to wire diameter on, and if using flux core, you'll use the black nozzle. Check under the hood for suggested settings that correlate to the thickness of material and process you are doing. I started out with a fillet weld T-joint on some eighth inch steel. I tried to keep a consistent speed and the stick out to about three eighths to a half of an inch. I then kicked it up to a quarter inch. This is the max thickness it claims it can do for flux core, doing it on a lap joint with just some plain Jane steel. Flux score is a messy process, so doing a quick pass with a wire wheel will clean that right up. Setting up the MIG wire is just as easy as flux core. For wire, they provide 0.025 or 25 thousandths solid core wire. And I wanted to test it out on a little thicker material, so I actually used my own 0.030 wire. Don't forget to switch the leads. MIG welding, you want electro positive. Flux core runs on electro negative. I hooked mine up to some C25 mixed gas, which is 25% CO2, 75% argon. Started with the same fillet weld T-joint on some eighth inch material. Then I kicked it up to the same quarter inch lap joint as the flux core and even going with a thicker uh, 30 thousandths wire, it actually doesn't claim it can be able to do this thick, but you know, this isn't for a welding certificate, so I'm going with it. With the flux core on one side and the MIG on the other, I was pretty happy with how they both ran.
Let's hop over to stick welding. So I'm going to take off the MIG gun. You actually don't need to take it out because you have access to the leads. And we are going to go uh, DCEP, so electro positive. Hook this guy up to the positive. And then our ground clamp will go to the negative. And just like that, you're ready to stick weld. Instead of spending, you know, like the 250 bucks for the foot pedal and I think they want like 150 for the TIG torch, I simply just went out and bought a 17V, which the V is for a, a manual valve. And the only thing I had to change or add to it was the, uh, the DINS connection. It came with a 25 and I don't know if you have a good eye or not, but these are the larger uh, 35 to 50 style we're going to treat this as if it's a stinger or an electro holder and just go straight into the positive and negative terminals. We're going to hook up the torch to the negative and the ground clamp to the positive. Switching over to 100% argon, that is a must with TIG welding and well, we're ready to go. Now, the foot pedal does give you uh, two advantages. If you end up going with it, it does give you uh, amperage control and it allows it to be a lift style uh, start. The only issue I have is the $1,000 base price, which doesn't include a TIG torch or a foot pedal. You know, I'm kind of on the fence. I mean, you know, it's an awesome machine. Don't forget about the three-year warranty. So if I would say if you have any desire to step up and just kind of get an introduction to TIG welding, by all means, it'll be a great welder for you. Um, if not, well, just stick with the 140 or the 180 and you'll be good. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.